This is the new reactor I'm working on. This is going to be a water gas reactor. Just got this end cap brazed on here. And I'm going to be wrapping a steam coil around that. Just thought I'd get a couple of clips of the process. So I'll remember what's inside this thing once it's all buried. nightmare here I don't have enough heat this may seem like a small job but it's apparently not enough for this five liters per minute I'm also using propane with this I had to up the game a little bit here I'm at about 1800 watts Okay, I finally got the heat I was needing. Had to go with some map gas. Now people tell me that this isn't the old map gas that was actually the trade name. I don't know what this stuff is, but it does seem to burn hotter. I also had to go to a bigger torch, the micro torch and all its fury just wasn't pulling this job off but uh, I think I'm finally there where I don't got to do any serious grinding really these are just the steam injection lines hopefully I didn't damage the interior that I have it may have leaned over on me I didn't think that was ever going to go together what I have here is a copper tube filled with salt. I'm going to pinch this top off and coil it around a piece of pipe to create an annular manifold for my steam injector. I just wanted to share this because a fellow YouTuber taught me this. I can't remember his name. But uh, just one of the cool things about YouTube is you learn a lot of really interesting tricks on fabrication and anything, basically. It's not just entertainment. And there we are nice little coil now I have done extremely long coils like this before um, filled the whole thing up with salt and then wrapped it around um, a small pipe you've seen that in the hydrothermic engine project and it worked great I had no real problem getting the salt out it takes a minute but with an air compressor alone I was able to blow the salt right out what I'm going to do now is cut directly across these two pipes and then form it together to make a ring or something similar to that okay so now I'm just going to try and torsion that together I think what I'm going to do is reheat it again and get it super soft before I do that though because now that I've already bent this into a coil the copper has rehardened and if you've ever worked with copper before or in fact it I guess better said, if you haven't ever worked with copper before, if you heat it up to a point where it's nearly red hot, or better yet, red hot, it will become really soft upon cooling. And it can be easily worked. But the moment you move it, the crystal structure realigns. Something very strange happens. It instantly becomes hard when you bend it. It's strange. You have to have held it in your hands and bent a few pipes to know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to heat this up with the torch before I attempt to bend that seam together but before that's done even I am of course going to ream these nasty edges up clean those off the salt fell right out pretty much during the cutting process so that wasn't an issue at all pretty cool little trick okay I'm getting ready to braise that together hopefully that gaps not too big it's a lot bigger than I'd like it to be, but I think I can pull it off okay. I have to braise this because of the high temperatures it's going to be exposed to. Just wanted to share a quick tip that I found very useful when brazing. If you feel like you've got too big of a blob in a certain area and you want to remove that blob, what I'll do, if I can find the rod here, 
is I'll just take my rod and I'll bring it over and get some flux in that area and then bring the heat in that direction and the brass or the bronze alloy brazing rod will actually flow to the heat so you can kind of use the heat to pull it from one area to another this kind of had a big blob and I didn't want to overheat it it's got one right there but uh, just a cool little trick that I've noticed and haven't ever heard anyone mention before now you can just get it real super hot and the metal will just go crazy but I wanted this to have a little bit of a rigid structure to it so I didn't want to overheat it but there was a certain limit to that rigid structure size so that's why I was being picky about it and I just noticed that that's a very cool way of dragging a small amount of brazing material off of the joint okay so there is the annular manifold for the super steam heater section I'm hoping to draw a bunch of the heat off of the reaction inside and I'm going to have a big solder joint or a big braze joint right in here and hopefully none of these will clog in the process I'm very worried about accidentally clogging one of my ports okay got a couple little poor spots there I ain't gonna let that bother me though it took a lot of steps to get this far I missed the shot where I did the acid bath and had this thing slid on the top it was in pretty good looking shape um, I've got a lot more to do this thing I just want to keep tabs of what's going on before it all gets put together and you can't see it this here is pretty much the exhaust screen that'll be fitted like this and this is shrouds over this is a lot bigger to give me an air gap and that's going to cap there I'm going to have a discharge line connected onto this probably this piece here okay here's the piece prior to a quick acid bath it's pretty dirtied up and I want to eat a lot of that crap out of the inside I'm going to be using some uratic acid and I'm just going to set it underneath this vent fan and hopefully pump the fumes out of here without rusting that thing apart even And that is after the acid bath. I still have to wrap a steam coil around this thing. Those there are the intake superheaters. So I don't want any water whatsoever spraying into this thing. I want this to be superheated steam. That is an annular manifold that's connected to the four steam intake lines okay I just did one more acid bath on this thing the amount of steps that were involved and in the creation of this thing are insane I know it doesn't look like much but there is quite a bit to it I'm sure if you can see down everything's looking good none of my holes got clogged making a little water there now what I'm going to do is braze this superheater coil in place. I didn't wrap it all the way around the exhaust chamber because I simply didn't have a long enough coil. This is as long as I had. This coil came out of the one of the old hydrothermic engine experiments, one of the first ones I ever did, so I was able to get some use out of that. And I did Okay, so this is some of the hardware I've got to work with. This is all stuff from the hydrothermic engine project. It's going to be repurposed. Hopefully I've got enough stuff here because I'm broke, man. I am not going to be able to put any money into this thing except for brazing materials and solder. So somehow I've got to turn this into a blower. I do have an impeller here. But I don't have a machine shop, man, so I can't just attach things to stuff that isn't compatible. 
so I've got my work cut out for me on that but I got a feeling this is going to be a pretty cool build here is the blower that I'm building for this device I got this nice little rotor out of a vacuum cleaner but the blower housing was not acceptable so I had to build this thing unfortunately and according to the direction of this propeller it should spin the right way now I did jump the gun a little bit and go ahead and build this before I tested the direction but I'm not too worried about that I know how to reverse direction on these universal motors you simply redirect the way the power is routed directly to the motor I'm not going to get into that explanation right now but just want to show that I did it's score on a free blower this came off a free vacuum cleaner and this came off a small blender for like uh, nutrition shakes and stuff so hopefully this thing works out good